Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth and I'm a music therapist at Notable Music Therapy Services in Reno, Nevada. Thank you for joining me today for our Tuesday Online Exploring Music class. We're so excited to be able to offer this class here on YouTube so that we can keep the music going and stay connected throughout these times of isolation. You are important to us and I'm so glad to be here with you today. So let's get started. Before we sing our hello song, I need to make a very important announcement. So starting next week, the first week of May, we will be moving this Exploring Music class to the Zoom platform. That way we will be able to interact with one another, see each other's faces, and hear each other's voices. So this will be our last YouTube video for Exploring Music. If you would like to continue with Exploring Music on Zoom with me, please register. There should be a link after this video or down below. You will also be contacted this week if you are already in the Exploring Music class. And if you have questions, you can call our office phone number. We're checking messages a couple of times a week and returning calls as best we can. So that office phone number is 775-324-5521. One more time, that number is 775-324-5521. We will be moving this Exploring Music class to the Zoom platform and removing it from YouTube. Well, not removing it from YouTube. There just won't be any future ones on YouTube. All right, so all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with our hello song. So as I've mentioned before, because the hello song that we use in class, which the Exploring Music class wrote themselves, um, it's, it's a pretty quick one so that we can get through to everybody. So I'm gonna sing a different song, it's a bit longer. And I wanna invite you to, while I sing, you can listen, dance along, maybe sing along if you catch on. Otherwise, I want you to take this time to check in with yourself, maybe deepen your breath, notice your body a little bit, and see how you're feeling this morning, this afternoon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello, notables, it's so good to see you. Hello, notables, I'm glad you're here today. I hope you got to take a chance to notice how you're feeling. And I've also noticed that if I say out loud how I'm feeling, it might feel silly if you're all by yourself, but go ahead and say out loud how you're feeling. It always helps me to feel safer and more grounded, especially if I'm feeling feelings like fear or worry or sadness. So I mentioned that I'm feeling sleepy today. Um, you heard I said morning instead of afternoon. Um, I think I've been getting plenty of rest, but I my mind has been so full of these new thoughts and new worries and just all of this is emotionally exhausting for me and exhausting mentally as well. So that's why I'm feeling kind of sleepy today. And I want to encourage you that whatever emotion you're currently experiencing to give yourself grace and forgiveness and understanding. Um, as you know, these are unprecedented times and our bodies, our brains are powerful. They do what they can to protect us and keep us safe. And sometimes that manifests as feeling a lot of different, really intense emotions quickly in succession. Or maybe it manifests for you in pushing down all of your emotions so that you don't feel anything. Um, just know that wherever it is that you are in that spectrum is okay. It's an okay place to be. It's a normal response to what's going on right now. <sighs> All right, so you may or may not have noticed, but I am wearing a black shirt today. Um, I put on some lipstick and some earrings, which if you know me, you know that that's pretty irregular for me to wear lipstick and earrings. But the reason that I decided to do that today was because in addition to our notable group adaptive classes and individual sessions, all those things that we're missing so dearly. I've also been missing playing violin with the Reno Phil, and uh, there have been a couple concerts that have come and passed um, that we weren't able to play in the past you know, month and a half or so. 
And um, as you know, for those concerts, we tend to dress all in black, which I, I did the top half in black today. Um, and so I thought we could focus on classical music today. And we'll sing one pop song at the end so that we can all get grooving and singing and dancing together. But I wanted to talk to you about Bach. So if you're in the group class, you've probably heard me talk a little bit about Bach before. But Johann Sebastian Bach is someone you've probably heard of. He is a composer and a musician. He was born, let me check my notes here, he was born in March of 1685 and he lived until July of 1750. So 1685 to 1750, he lived a pretty long life. He was born in Germany and he was a composer during what we call the Baroque period of classical music. And Bach came from a very musical family. He had many brothers and sisters. Later on, he had many children himself, but um, he grew up musical family. Both of his parents unfortunately passed away when Bach was 10 years old, so he lived with one of his older brothers who cared for him. And um, I, I don't know the exact timeline of all this, but I believe that one of Bach's earlier jobs, careers, um, well we know that he played many different instruments, uh, especially the organ. The We've talked about the organ a little bit, it's like the piano, but there are a couple of different keyboards, a couple of different options for the for that part, and also a bunch of different levers for the feet. Organ is super complicated. Let's watch a video about it sometime. Anyway, so Bach played many different instruments. One of his first career paths was to work in the in the Lutheran Church. So he wrote a lot of music that was used for uh, religious services and ceremonies. Um, he worked as the cantor in the church. And so we know that many churches still have cantors today, right? So that was Bach's, one of his earlier jobs. Um, he worked for a prince at one point, and this prince practiced Calvinism. And within Calvinism, it's another religion, and they would use psalms within the services. And so they didn't want new music being written. They already had what they used. And so Bach was in a new position, and he found himself writing um, non-religious music for, I don't know, maybe one of the first times in his life. And he was writing a lot for violin. The prince was an accomplished violinist and he had friends who played instruments with him. So this is when Bach wrote his famous Brandenburg Concerti um, for a small group of ensemble ensemble players. He also wrote his six unaccompanied uh, six unaccompanied solo suites for cello and for violin during this time. So he, I, my favorite works of Bach are his solo works for cello and for violin. Once we're back together, I'd love to play a recording of one of his cello Bach suites for you. I can guarantee you will all recognize it. Um, but his violin pieces, if you are a violinist, you are definitely gonna study, if not one, if not all of them, at least one of his pieces, his sonatas or petitas. And I have not yet had the honor to play all of them or study all of them just yet, but I, um, I've i been studying a couple of the sonatas and partitas for the past maybe decade or so. Um, Bach's work is kind of like that. It There are so many different ways to interpret the notes and to bring them to life, and so you could, you could spend your whole life studying Bach's work, I believe. Uh, so... I want to play one short piece from his sonata number one for violin for you today. But before we do that, I want to share a little piece of trivia. Um, it's interesting, these a lot of Bach's work was neglected and forgotten about. And sometime after his death, the, the transcripts for the violin works were found in a, something like a bakery or something like that. And they were going to be used to wrap butter. Can you believe that? They were going to use box masterpieces to wrap butter. So just imagine a world where that had happened. And instead of hearing Bach's beautiful violin pieces, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. Maybe our musical taste and pathways would have gone in a completely different direction. Or maybe there would have been another composer pretty similar to Bach. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, okay. Before I play, just a couple more things, a couple more caveats. I wanted to show you what the music actually looks like. So 
This is a um, an edition that was edited by Ivan Galamian. He's a he was an incredible violinist, and so he took box transcripts and he made some edits as far as bowings and fingerings and all of that. So I'm showing this to you, but my laptop that I'm using to record this went to sleep. So excuse me while I open it back up. Okay, here we go. So this is what the notation looks like. You'll notice there's a lot of notes close together. Some notes happen on top of each other. And you may also see that there's a lot of pencil markings in there, which is evidence that I've been studying it for the past 10 years. So the cool thing about this, my blue Bach book that is tattered and I take with me everywhere, is at the back of the book is Bach's original transcription so we can see what it looked like when Bach actually wrote the music. So this is his handwriting. It's pretty beautiful. And even though that's kind of, I don't know, to me it looks messy, but imagine having to write all that out and it might give you a better appreciation of his penmanship, his craftsmanship, his work. It's just beautiful. Wow, it's like an art project or something. Okay, so I'm going to play this piece for you, the Adagio from Sonata Number no. 1. This is, um, it's called Adagio, which is a it's, a, it's kind of a tempo marking, so it tells you how quick or how slow to go, and Adagio means very slow, kind of heavy, heartfelt. So this piece is not a, uh, not an upbeat song, um, it's a kind of solemn piece of music. So while I play, I encourage you to take those deep breaths. Um, actually, I'm going to take a couple with you before we start, just for my own nerves. But take those deep breaths. Notice as you listen to the music if it brings up any memories or thoughts or emotions. And notice them without judging them too much. You know, hold on to it, but then let it go too. Okay, let's take three big breaths together. And then next time you see me, I'll have my violin in my hand. So breathing in. I'm breathing out. Right, two more deep breath in. Breathe out through the mouth. Let your shoulders fall. Good. One more breath, filling the belly. Feel it rise. Here is Johann Sebastian's Bach Sonata Number no. One Adagio.
Adagio from Bach Sonata Number no. One for solo violin. Now, if you could take three big breaths with me at home when I play, and maybe some of you musicians notice this too in yourselves, but when I play, I notice I don't breathe as deeply, and my heart starts to beat a little quicker and quicker. So let's take three big breaths together, breathing in. Okay, two more. Big breath in. Last one. So as I mentioned, a lot of box music can be interpreted in different ways, different styles of playing. And that particular piece, uh, the Adagio from Sonata Number no. 1, has a lot of double stops, triple stops, quadruple stops. Um, so a lot of chords within the playing, which I think when we have more than one note playing with each other, you can notice um, based on the relationship between the two notes, it kind of gives you an idea of the emotion or the intent for the piece. So using my piano here, if I played, uh, let's see, a G minor chord, which is what the piece opens with. So we have G, B, D, G, right? So on violin. So that minor, the relationship between the G and the B flat to the D, that minor chord has kind of a small relationship between the notes and to me it sounds very uh, pained, very troubled. And so throughout that piece I, I hear a lot of moments of tension and release, a lot of moments of, of trouble, of um, you know terror or pain followed by gratitude, joy, whatever it is. Mm, okay, so before we look at one more Bach piece, something a little more upbeat, I wanted to show you my violin. So we know that people who make violins are called luthiers, violin makers, and the person who made my violin, you can see if you look in the F hole here, although I don't think I can show the video, his name was Ferdinand Patzelt, and he lived in Dresden, and this violin was made in the year 1899. So we know Bach was born in the 1680s at some point, and so this violin is almost 200 years younger than Bach was, but this violin is still almost 100 years older than me. So there's about 300 years difference between when Bach was born, when I was born, when some of us were born too, right? And his music has transcended that time and continues to, at least for me, um, help me explore my most my most painful emotions as well as some of my most beautiful ones. So to give you a taste of some of other some of Bach's other work, his more upbeat work, this is a gavotte from his partita number no. two. And um, his partitas are basically a bunch of different dances. So this is the gavotte, and so people would dance together to this kind of music. I'm only gonna play a very short excerpt because I haven't worked on this piece in a long time. Um, so I'm just gonna play the first line and I'll repeat it for you. And this is just so you get an idea. Um, the last piece by Bach we listened to or that I played was very heavy, very solemn. So this is just to show you that he also plays with some lighter sounds. exactly how I would have liked to play it for you, but I hope you got some of that energy, that lightheartedness. You could imagine, 
I just imagine a bunch of light-hearted folks dancing in a in a grand sunny ballroom um, without a care in the world. All right, so I hope you learned something about Bach today that you didn't know, um, or maybe you already knew everything I said about Bach today. But before I sing goodbye to you today and before we part, I wanted to do something that was from the last 50 years. So I've been singing in the song Eye of the Tiger a lot this past week. I don't really know why, I couldn't tell ya. Might be kind of a coping mechanism for me. It's a really fun, upbeat song and it's kind of silly. Um, so let's sing that one together, Eye of the Tiger. I'm gonna put my violin away and get set up with the guitar and then we'll do some singing together. Eye of the Tiger is from an American rock band called Survivor, and it was released in the year 1982. So it's an 80s song, so we might guess that it might be upbeat, which we'd be right about. And if you've seen the Rocky franchise, it is featured in Rocky 3. I actually haven't seen any of the Rocky films yet. Uh, I'll put that on my to-do list. But I bet you'll recognize this song if you haven't already recognized it just from the name. I the tiger. So go ahead and sing along. If you want to dance along, you could do that. You could clap your hands, or if you have an instrument, go ahead and play along. Here we go, everybody. I might have to pause a couple times to scroll the music here. maybe dance along. Thanks for sticking with me throughout all my pauses there. That'll be a fun one. We could sing it when we're all together again. We've got a big list of songs that we want to do when we're all together. Which brings me 
back to our first announcement. This is our last class that we'll be providing on YouTube for exploring music. We'll be moving to online Zoom sessions next week. So first week of May 2020, we'll be doing Zoom sessions for exploring music at Notable Music Therapy Services. You can call our office or you can send me an email or Dina an email to sign up and register. We'll also be making phone calls to everybody who's already in the Exploring Music class. All right. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Before we sing our goodbye song, let's take three really big deep breaths, maybe the deepest breaths you've taken all day. So finding a comfortable position wherever you are in space, whether you're sitting or standing or lying down, ah, just notice how your body feels and what parts of your body are supported by a surface below you. And we'll start to take a big breath in through the nose, taking a long breath in, filling the stomach and the lungs. And letting it go. Great. Two more just like that. Big deep breath in, filling the lungs. Great. One more. If you want to let out a sigh or a yell, a meow, a woof, whatever it is, go ahead. So big breath in. notice whenever I take those big breaths I feel an almost immediate release in my shoulders upper back body it's not a full release of course but it feels really good to take those deep breaths so I encourage you to keep breathing deep all right everybody we'll sing goodbye today and we'll sing goodbye to Elizabeth notables and how about Johann Sebastian or Johann Sebastian Bach and we could sing to hmm Survivor too. Okay, so we got Elizabeth, Notables, Johann Sebastian, and Survivor. Got it? All right, let's try it. So this is the Exploring Music's Goodbye song, which they wrote. It's an original Exploring Music song. today. Please subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with our schedule of online groups and classes. So while we are moving our exploring music classes to a Zoom platform, we will still be providing weekly and really daily music and mindfulness and afternoon musical adventure videos on YouTube here for free. So be sure to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with our schedule for those classes. And if you love music and if you want to help us keep it going, there's a link to donate down below. Even $5 makes a huge difference in the lives of all of us who need music now more than ever. And be sure to share our channel with anybody else who you think might enjoy being with us here throughout the week for some mindfulness or some afternoon adventures. Until we meet again, take care.